Hallelujah. You're welcome to the online preview session. And today, the topic we'll be considering is in lesson 47. It talks about the spotless bride. The spotless bride. Shall we pray? I'd like you to say with me, Father, please help me to present myself pure and spotless for your second coming. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Father, please help me to present myself pure and spotless for your second coming. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, help us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I'm glad to be with us one more time. And our Bible passage for today's lesson is found in the book of Ephesians 5, 17 to 30. Ephesians 5, 17 to 30. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, we are in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart unto the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 23, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wife's be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be only and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet ate his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bone. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the mighty name of Jesus. Now in this Bible passage, we can see that the Apostle Paul listed ways to be spotless until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, the first thing he made mention, one of the things he made mention of, rather, is that we should be filled with the Holy Spirit and not with wine. That one can be found in Ephesians 5, 18. He further admonished that we should occupy our hearts with melodious spiritual songs. This can be seen in verse 19. He mentioned giving thanks to God for all things as another way to preserve ourselves spotless. Now, as teachers, we, when we look, there are many other things in that Bible passage that we can see that believers, through which believers can actually remain spotless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm going to just mention five for us. And in verse 17, that's the, the first verse we quoted. We can see wisdom and understanding there. The Bible says we should not be unwise. We should know what the will of the Lord is. From here, you can see wisdom and understanding. We should understand it. And as teachers, we should know that is the will of God that we should be chaste, 
is the will of the Lord that we should be sober, is the will of the Lord that we should be pure, and a lot more. Then another thing you can see is submission in verse 21 and 24. We can see submission. We can see also love in verse 28 in, in that Bible text. We husband as um, wives have been asked to love they are, I mean, husband has been asked to love their wives as Christ loves the church and gave himself for it. We can also see holiness in verse 27. Then, of course, the Bible makes us to see in verse 29 in the text that through the word of God, we believers can be perfected and can remain spotless unto the coming of the Lord. I pray that the Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'd like us to go to our memory verse quickly. And it's also in that Ephesians 5, 27. Ephesians 5, 27. The Bible says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be only and without blemish. I'll take it again. That he might present to himself a glorious church, not having wrinkle or spot or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 5, 27. Now to our introduction, the church that we are talking about is a congregation of all born again believers. Is the one that is referred to as the bride of Jesus Christ in the text under consideration. You can see this in Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. Almost invariably, when a man chooses a bride, he chooses someone who is closest to him in manners, in attributes, aspirations, ways of doing things and the likes, because only beds of the same feather flock together. Of course, the most three, three says, can two work together except they be agreed. The Lord Jesus Christ is holy, is spotless, without blemish. Hence, his bride must be without spots and wrinkles. Two, I pray that the Lord will give us understanding as we move on. So, we are going to consider two outlines. The first outline talks about the essence and process of being spotless. The essence and the process of being spotless. While the second outline talks about area of spotlessness. Areas of spotlessness. Now, let's take the first outline. The first outline seeks to address two things. Two questions. First of which is, why should I be spotless as a member of the church, as the church of Christ? Because as individuals, we are the church of Christ. Even as the body of the called, to get called out together, we are the church. So why should I be spotless? And how could I actually be spotless? So why should I be spotless? Number one thing is that you are a child of God. You are a child of God. Bible makes this clear to us in John 1, 12, that but as many as received him, to them he gave, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Because you believe in him, he, he, you have received the power to be the son of God. You are enabled and empowered even to live above this earthly realm. You are enabled and empowered even to live as he is because you have been given the power to become the sons of God. So you are a child of God and is expected of you to be spotless. Secondly, your heavenly father is spotless. You need to know that your heavenly father is spotless. This is can be found in Matthew 5.48. The Bible says that we should be perfect even as our heavenly father is perfect. We should be perfect 
you may substitute it for spotless, even as our Heavenly Father is. The third reason is that you are a bride of Christ. Therefore, you must be spotless. You are a bride of Christ. Christ is spotless. You would expect, according to Ephesians 5, 29 to 30, Bible makes us to understand that there is no man that ate his own flesh or his own body. He would nourish and cherish it. And if we are one with God, if we are his bride, we are, you know that we are, we are one with him. And if we are one with him, and no man ate his own body, but we nourish and cherish it, if we know that Christ would also do everything to, 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 to make sure that we are nourished and we are cared for. So we are the bride of Christ, therefore we must be spotless. Another thing is that in our earthly and finite senses, no man who beats his chest proudly and say, his wife-to-be or his wife is an harlot. No. Every sensible groom wants to marry a chaste and a pure bride. So if we have the understanding that we are the bride of Christ, we should know that Christ is spotless. And so shall he desire that we are spotless if he's going to be proud of us. Fourthly, fourthly, why should you be spotless? The bride of Christ will be married to only Christ in heaven that is holy. The he heaven that we are all that we all have in focus is a holy place. So if we know that we are the bride of Christ, we should know that we'll be married to this holy Christ in an holy place. The Bible has established this in Isaiah 35 8 that an highway shall be there, and a way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the wave fearing men, though fools shall not hear therein. So the heaven where we are going to, it's a holy place. So we should know that we will be married to our holy Christ in, the, in a heaven that is full of holiness. Another reason is that you are required by the Almighty God to be spotless and be without wrinkle. We are to be spotless and be without wrinkle. Ephesians 5.27 makes it clear that he might present a church without wrinkle and spot, no stain. As a matter of Christ, you need, and I need to know that Christ paid with his blood so that we can be present before the throne of God, holy, without wrinkle, and without spot. Now, how could I be spotless? How could I be spotless? Number one, you need to purge yourself from all sinful habits and excesses. All sinful habits and excesses. If we are to be spotless, we will purge ourselves from all sinful habits and excesses. Job 11, 14 to 15 makes it clear that if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away and let no wickedness dwell in your tabernacles. For then shall thou lift up your face without spot. If we will put away iniquity far away from us, we will be without spot. 2 Timothy 2, 21 also says that if a man therefore purge himself from from these, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and made for the first master's use and prepared for every good work. So, for us to be spotless, you need to purge yourselves. I need to purge myself from all sinful habits and excesses. Meaning that you, wherever, whatever areas or things that magnify your weaknesses, don't pretend you need to, if possible, run away from them. Confess them before the Lord and ask him for help and don't return back to it. Secondly, you need to run away from all worldly affairs that can contaminate your holiness. Run away from worldly affairs that can contaminate your holiness. First John 2, 15, 17 says, Love not the world. If any man loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you, you need to run away from worldly affairs that you know can contaminate 
your holiness for you to be spotless. Thirdly, you need to live daily for God as if each day is the last day. We need to live as if each day is the last day. Romans 12, 1 to 2 says that we should present ourselves as a living sacrifice. We should ensure and endeavor to live every day that pass by as a day that as if the Lord is coming that very day. Second Corinthians 13, 5 says, If a man therefore purge himself from this, it shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, meet for the master's use, prepared for every good work. We should live ready, live as if each day is the last day. Live as if each day God has an assignment for you and you cannot compromise the standard of purity and holiness so that his spirit can flow effortlessly through you. I pray that the Lord will help us. In the name of Jesus, how could I be spotless? Totally, you need to rely on the Lord Jesus Christ to help you to attain your determination. Without him, we cannot do anything. John 15, 5 makes it clear that he's the vine and we are the branches. It's only when we abide in him that we can become fruitful. No matter our resolutions, no matter what we write down as our goals and uh, our visions, without him, without his help, we cannot be spotless. So we really need, need to really rely on the Lord Jesus Christ to help us to attain every of our determination and resolution. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I pray that the Lord will help us and enable us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's quickly go to the second outline. The second outline talks about area of spotlessness believers must be spotless in certain areas in fact all areas but on, we want to focus on what we really need to 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 to, to really put premium on let like what we need in areas where we can easily fall and get i mean get contaminated the first one is spotless in words in words we need to be spotless in words. James 3, 2 makes it clear. For in many things we offend. We offend all. But if a man will not offend in words, that's what the Bible is saying. The Bible says that same is a perfect man. We are quick to talk. If a man will not offend in words, the man is perfect and is able to breathe in his own tongue. Colossians 4, 6 says, our speech should always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that we may know how we ought to answer every man. We should be spotless in words. First Peter 4 1. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody. In other men's matter, spotless in words. Spotless in words. Revelation 21 7. And there shall no, in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, spotless in words, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Mark 7.20 says, What comes out of a man defiles a man, spotlessness in words, meaning that we should be spotless by bridling our tongues. Be spotless by bridling your tongue. It's easy for us to want to, to offend in words. We can be provoked and then we want to answer back and say all sorts. We should be able to bridle our tongue. We should also be spotless by carefully selecting words before we speak it. That's why the Bible says that our words should be full of grace, seasoned with salt, that we may know what we ought to answer anyone you know that ask it then see by avoiding gossip lying backbiting rumor mongering by not being busybody in other people's affairs by focusing on what is what we should focus on and avoiding all forms of distraction or sowing discords about by avoiding speeches that defile it's what comes out of us that defiles. It's what comes out of us that defiles. The Lord will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. 
We should be spotless in thoughts. We should be spotless in thoughts. Believer thoughts and speeches must glorify God. Psalms 19.14 says, Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Be acceptable in your sight. Ephesians 3.20 gives us a clue into God seeing beyond and acting beyond just what we say. God can do even beyond what we think, we speak or think. I mean, that is why we should be careful the way what we think. We are to be spotless in thoughts. Believers' thoughts and speeches must glorify God. But So how can we attain this? Spotlessness in thought. Your heart must be pure at all times. Bible has made it clear to us in Matthew 24, Matthew 12, 34 to 35, that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If this is, if this is so, we need to make sure that our heart is pure at all times. And we do this by guiding our thoughts. We need to guide our thoughts and also meditate upon the word of God. Joshua 1, 8 says the book of God should not depart from our, out of our side. We should meditate upon it day and night. Day and night. Another thing is that we should think on what is true. What is just. What is honest. What is pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, and praiseworthy. Philippians 4, 8. Bible knows that there is tendency for us to think on what is untrue. What is unjust. What is not honest. What is impure. And a lot more. That's why the Bible admonished that we should, we should think on things that are true, that are just. Positive vibes all around us. We should not give our attention because as a man thinketh in his heart. So if someone said, what you focus, your focus is your reality. When we begin to ponder on that thing, we eventually, we will, we will, we will, we will bat it. If someone comes to us, we gossip about anybody, eventually, when we get bitter about the person, we will react it out. We will react to that person. So we need to think on what is true and what is just and what is honest. We need to be spotless in deeds. We must be spotless in deeds. Our deed must glorify our heavenly father. Matthew 14, 16. We are a city set on the hill. We cannot be hidden. Our light to shine so that our God can be glorified. We are the ones the people are reading. We cannot but be spotless indeed. In integrity, in competency, in uniqueness. We need to be spotless in our deeds. Our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, the disciples learned more from his being than from even the word he spoke. He was with them all the time except the solitary times he had with the Lord praying. He practically revealed his own life, deeds and everything to them. I pray the Lord will give us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. So, when we're talking about being spotless in deeds, you may want to ask how. In our actions, we should shine as light, either at home, office, market, everywhere and in everything that we do. The Lord God will help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as, as a matter of conclusion, all the brides of Christ are required to be spotless. As brides of Christ, if we know that we are going to be enlisted as bride, as a bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is required that you and I be spotless. So we must be pure and holy. The Lord God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, before we pray, uh, our lesson outlines, teachers are implored to guide our students accordingly on our first class activity, rather, and the second class activity activity. Whatever, let's allow them to make their contribution and then guide them in the light of what the Bible, what we know is the biblical view of being spotless. As we do this, the Lord God would help us all in the mighty name of Jesus. As we close, shall we say this prayer? Say, Almighty God, please 
help us, your children, to stay away from those things that can bring stains to our garment in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, please help us to stay away from those things that can bring stains to our garment. Those things that would make you not to enlist us on the last day as your bride. Father, help us to stay away from it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Almighty, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Till we come your way next time, God bless you and remain spotless. Kindly subscribe, kindly like and share our youth, um, the, uh, our broadcast and subscribe to our channel. As you do this, the Lord God will keep you spotless. The Lord God will continue to take you from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Shalom. Jesus is for us, we shall come.